Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Kenyon. Welcome to the Steve Kenyon Podcast, episode 27 of the Steve Kenyon Podcast. Our featured interview this week coming up in just a moment. Jeff Metters will join us. We'll talk about his future plans. Of course, Jeff, the longtime voice of the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo on television, left the Cowboy Channel on December the 31st, and Geronimo Productions is hard at work putting together some very interesting programming. We will tell you about that coming up, and uh, Jeff's always good for a great story or two, and so I'm looking forward to you having a chance to hear from Jeff Metters in just a moment. Today's program is being sponsored by Wrangler. Long live Cowboys. Thank you to the Justin Boot Company, the standard of the West since 1879. To Prefert, number one in ranch and rodeo. To Resist All, we wear it every day. To Unbeatable Feeds, you'll find them in locations all over the country. Try the new forage only feed. Our horses love it. Yours will too. And a big thank you to M2 Ranch Jerky. M2 Ranch Jerky, true traditional cowboy jerky, coming this spring to a store near you. Well, the Rodeo in Rapid City, South Dakota, just uh, kicked off its first weekend. That's the five-time and reigning large indoor rodeo of the year in the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association, Rodeo Rapid City. Rodeo Rapid City started last weekend Friday night with an extreme bull riding, Saturday night with an extreme bronc riding. Clayton Sellers from Florida won the extreme bull riding competition in the process, putting himself in the top five in the PRCA's world standings. He's overcome some injury issues trying to get to his fourth NFR. We talked to Clayton Sellers about his big win in Rapid City. Uh, thank you, Mr. Steve. That was a good weekend for me. Um, years past, Rapid's always been a pretty productive stop. Um, you know, I've never won it before, but it's always definitely added to, uh, to my year. 86 points in the long round. You won the long round on a bull called Bugatti from uh, Sankey Pro Rodeo and Phenom Genetics. Tell me about that bull and that ride. Yeah, that's a good bull. I've been seeing him for a while now. He's uh, one of the better ones, you know, and when I got that draw, I was pretty excited about it. I knew I had a pretty good shot to win the long round, and, and I was just happy to have him by my name. And then in the short round, you ended up second. Um mm-hmm and uh, made an 87-point ride, finished in the number two spot there, won the average. Clayton, you're 25 years old, so you're not a, not an old guy at all, obviously. But um, the kid that ended up right behind you and won the short round, finished second in the long round behind you, was a young man named Jeter Lawrence from Oklahoma who's 18 years old. Um, you look around every once in a while and go, wait a minute, who are these kids? I mean, did you know him at all? Did you get to meet him, visit with him, talk to him? So, I am a large Jeter Lawrence fan. I, I met that boy in um, Cave Creek, Arizona, about two months ago. And uh, in Cave Creek, he got on four re-rides in a row, back wow. to back, and rode every single one of them. I mean, dead perfect, like. Sure enough, tough kid and rides really, really good. So uh, after I met him there, I was a big Jeter Lawrence fan. And then I, he uh, he walked up in Rapid and, and got a walk up replacement. And uh, he rode with me, rode both his bulls, and dang near won the whole thing. Like, yeah, I'm a huge Jeter Lawrence fan. The kid rides great, and uh, he's gonna be around for a while. Yeah. Um, how nice is it for you at this moment? You're a bull rider, so I know something hurts. But how nice is it yeah. to be healthy yeah. right now? You have you've dealt with some injuries over the last what two years? Am I right in saying that? Yeah, yeah, I, I had two injuries back to back. It ended up being you know about two years, um, but it's awesome right now. I mean, I, I wake up and you know I go through a, a full complete workout and I have no problems. You know, I strike out, run a couple miles, hmm. do all my weights, like everything feels great, and you know I can do whatever it is I want to go do, <laughs> and yeah. that includes. Right- Goals and and making the NFR again or whatever goals I set and it just feels great, you know. Where are you at right now, if I may ask? I see trees, I see sunshine, I see horses in the background. Yeah. Uh, wherever you're at, you found a pretty nice spot. Yeah, no doubt. I'm in, I'm in Florida right now. We did a little bit of cow work this morning and we just pulled up to our arena. We're about to do some team roping for the rest of the day. So, pretty nice, pretty nice spot right now. I want to ask you what may be Steve's dumb question to the interview, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, 
you you when I talked to you about doing this, you said, you know, if you catch me at the wrong time, I'm going to be on a horse. Does the ability yeah. to there are bull riders in the world. This is not a big secret who cannot ride a saddle horse, period. End of story. Uh, the, yeah, the thing they they're they're the most afraid of is the potential victory lap at a rodeo. Um, <laughs> how much does it help you riding bulls to be able to ride a saddle horse well? You know, I I don't really know. I I'd imagine it helps a little bit. Um, you know, I I always noticed when I was young when I when I spent the whole week doing cow work, I usually rode better that that weekend. You know, so, it, and lately I've been working for horse trainers and, and things like that and team roping a little on my off time. And, you know, I feel like it just, it keeps your riding muscles tuned up, you know, those odd and end muscles that you don't really think about. So I, I think it helps in some way, shape or form. Um, but for me, it's more of a, more of just a, a you know, a, a lifestyle thing that, you know, it's just things that I like to do and end up, you know, needing to do to, to keep the ranch going and you know just something we do bull rider clayton sellers left rapid city fourth in the prca's world standings the extreme bronc riding event on saturday night in rapid city and the champion was brody wells he's from wyoming wells won the short round with an 89 and a half point score at the rodeo in rapid city and we asked him to tell us about the horse called bugsy from the muddy creek rodeo company 89 and a half on uh, muddy creek's horse bugsy in the championship round brody welcome congratulations um let's talk about bugsy you made a comment to prorodeo.com you said that that horse maybe to the average fan doesn't look as i forget your exact words hard to ride challenging to ride as the horse really is talk about that a little bit yeah he's i mean there's nothing you know he doesn't have any dirty tricks to him or anything like that he's just a straight up bucking horse you know he goes out there circles around to the right and just bucks and he's just strong he's he's just big strong bucking horse and he's he's going to get on because you know you got to got to do your stuff right but they're still not impossible to ride or anything like that like a lot of guys want a lot of money on that horse because of that reason yeah you said i felt like i rode bugsy pretty good and you talked specifically about the mark out um is there is that horse got kind of a big move out of there and makes him a little tougher to mark out uh from everything i've seen he just leaves out of there just common but you don't want to get behind one like that or or you'll just get paddled across there and <laughs> look pretty silly so yeah i told brody before we started this it's about time we get you to the national finals rodeo and yeah. i really mean it brody wells is a good bronc rider top four at the college finals for tarleton state a couple of years ago um you had to overcome some injuries last year your body kind of took a beating didn't it yeah i just had a bunch of i mean kind of not very significant you know like you know have to take two, three months off or, you know, like have to just more frustrating deals and they were all more muscle related. So thankfully I didn't have to go and get plates or screws put in. And, and, uh, I had to get operated on, on my leg just cause it got infected inside of there and just, but yeah, I was, I was fortunate enough that they weren't, you know, soup. They could have been a lot worse. Could have broke, you know, should have broke my femur and Casper, but hmm. my quad took all the damage, which was good. So just more frustrating things. I've just had to, just sit out and and let my body heal up a little bit and come back. So Yeah. Um, ProRodeo.com article, Well's most severe injury happened in July when he tore his quad in his left leg during a ride at the Central Wyoming Fair in Casper. What happened there? Do you do you remember that? I mean, when you think back on it, can you kind of see what happened? Oh, yeah. I seen it. I seen it coming. <laughs> this horse is going out across there right towards that concrete wall at Casper, and he picks his head up right at the wall. And then he just, you know, slams my leg in between my saddle and the leg into that concrete wall. And it just, just tore, you know, just hit it at the right spot. Luckily I didn't break the the bone there, but it just tore the, ripped everything up in there. And so that was pretty fun. But did the wall survive? That's the real question. <laughs> yeah, it's still standing. <laughs> Brody, talk to me about, um, how you got started. I, I made the comment that I really, I'm a Brody Wells fan and I really feel like you, you ride well. Um, who got you started? There are a lot of good bronc riders to help a guy out in the state of Wyoming. Oh man. I mean, there's been a ton of people that have, you know, influenced, but I was really, I was riding a bunch of Colts and I was riding Colts for a guy 
all summer and I don't think I ever I I can't even remember hitting the ground really I was just pretty pretty sticky in this hmm. and I was 15 or 16 and like my dad rode bulls and bareback horses in college and up in Canada and stuff but um, so I've always been around it, but he's like, you need to go get a Bronx saddle and, and go to a school or go to, you know, get on some Bronx. And so I did, but you know, I went to some schools like, you know, the Montana boys, you know, um, uh, Tyrell Smith and, you know, Sage was younger and, but he was just when he was getting rolling and Chase Brooks and, you know, they go, and then just being around the, like the going over to the Forbes is over in KC and getting on, you know, just going to those buck outs and going down and getting on it. Laramie and getting on JD stuff and just being around getting on good Bronx and being around good guys. Um, riding Colts requires a certain level of horsemanship. How important is that to, to be able to ride a saddle Bronc horse? Well, does that help you in riding a, uh, in, to be able to ride a saddle horse? Well, to be able to ride a saddle Bronc horse? Well, Oh yeah, I think so for sure. Because you can get in, you know, there's some guys that they're great bronc riders, but you can you can tell they they don't even know how to saddle a yeah. horse. Yeah. But and uh, you can see them have have a little trouble in the shoot and whatnot. But it's it comes in handy when you're, you know, those horses feel you. They can feel your you know your energy when you're getting on them and putting haltering them and saddling and pulling and getting on. So I mean. The more the more you know horse sense, the better likely you are not to get smashed, or you can sneak out on that bad one, or you know just get in there, get out. It took almost a hundred and thirty thousand dollars just to get into the NFR last year. Um, you won fifty three hundred at Rapid City, uh, which is a nice start. But I mean, I don't I don't know if that's going to happen again this year or not. But somehow, for some reason, Bronc riders won a ton of money how do you how do you gauge your progress during the year have you written down a number or a, a goal uh how do, how do you how do you gauge your progress as you try to get to your first nfr oh yeah i got you know i wrote down goals like i think everybody does but yeah i just want i wrote down number that i definitely think i can get and then you know you get that number and you're for sure going to the nfr like regular season earnings but yeah there's a lot of there's so many events like with all these extreme Bronx and, and these yeah. extreme Bronx finale and the tour finals and Pialop and Sioux Falls and all that, like they had so much money and there's so many good Bronx riders. Like it's so, so deep in the Bronx riding, you know, anybody can go out there and win pretty much in the top, top 50, you know, it, if they draw right. So it's pretty, it's pretty stout and everybody rodeos hard and everybody rides good. So. Yeah. You're, you, you brought up something there. Your event is loaded. I mean, yeah. it's, it's your yeah. event from top to bottom. Uh, there are some real good saddle bronc riders. Yeah, it's pretty cool, and it's fun, you know, like at these bronc matches and stuff. You know, obviously we're all competing against each other, but, it, you know, you're in one of those short rounds, and just like the other day at Rap, when that horse was circling around, I could hear all my buddies hollering on the back of the bucks and shoots. So you know, those, those bronc matches get pretty fun. And that's Brody Wells, the saddle bronc riding champion of the uh, Extreme Bronc Riding event in Rapid City, South Dakota. You can find all of these interviews. We upload them all either on the Next Gen Rodeo Facebook page or on our YouTube channel from 8secondsmedia.com. Our featured interview this week is Jeff Metters, who has left the Cowboy Channel and is uh, working on some very interesting projects on his own. We will tell you about those projects and Jeff will join us coming up on the other side of this timeout. We're sponsored by the Grand View at Las Vegas. Where do you stay during the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo? Check out the Grand View at dailymanagementresorts.com. And a big thank you goes to Classic Equine. We're proud to have them as a part of 8 Seconds Media. We're coming back with more in just a moment. Hey, y'all, this is Cody Johnson. When I was starting out in music, most every radio station and venue I went to told me no. At that point, you got two options, tuck tail and quit or buckle down and fight. Well, I'm a fighter, not a quitter. And that's why I wear Wrangler jeans and shirts. Their toughness and style are legendary. They're an iconic symbol of the West, and there's no quit in them either. Life's not about the destination. It's about the journey. And if I'm going to enjoy the ride, I'm riding in Wrangler. Wrangler, long live Cowboys. New styles join our time-tested Justin Bent Rail collection. Like the rugged men and women who wear them, these boots stand for quality, integrity, tradition, and hard work. 
Straight from our legendary El Paso factory, our expert bootmakers build these boots with features that would make even the earliest cowboys proud. Outfit yourself today with a bent rail collection by Justin. There's no pretending to being a cowboy. Either you are or you aren't. Which is why everything we do as a company improves or preserves this way of life. The romance, the honesty, the toughness, the craft. More cowboys, please. America could use them. Resist all. We live it every day. Unbeatable Feeds New Forage Only feeds are sweeping the country. Unbeatable Feeds New Forage Only blend features three simple ingredients, alfalfa, beet pulp, and flaxseed oil. Unbeatable Feeds Forage Only feed is clean and natural, high energy, low sugar, and easily digestible. Where can you find Unbeatable Feeds? Tractor Supply Company all over the country. Bomb guards, runnings, you can find a dealer near you on the store locator tab at unbeatablefeeds.com. Thank you for listening to the Steve Kenyon Podcast. By the way, we're going to have some fun with our 8 Seconds Media store, give you a chance to win some merchandise. Stay tuned to our 8 Seconds Media Facebook page, and we'll give you all of the details. There is news about the world champion bull rider Kai Hamilton from Australia is out of action indefinitely. He injured his shoulder, according to ProRodeo.com, at the rodeo in Denver. Uh, That happened on January the 18th. He said it came out in Denver, and then it came out again in Fort Worth. The 23-year-old Hamilton has been in consultation with Dr. Tandy Freeman. Not sure how long he will be out, but it could be for a while. He was sitting 16th in the world standings early in 2024 with about $14,000 won for the year, planning to have surgery on February the 21st. They say it'll be a six-month recovery after that. That according to Kai Hamilton and ProRodeo.com. This week's featured interview is Jeff Metters. Jeff announced his resignation from the Cowboy Channel on December the 10th on Luke Branquino's podcast on the final day of the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo. It became official on December the 31st. Metters has been the voice of the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo on television, uh, no matter what the network, from ESPN to CBS to the Cowboy Channel for almost 30 years. Imagine he and Butch Knowles voices on the national finals rodeo anytime in the last three decades they have become an institution at the nfr well i thought it'd be fun to catch up with jeff and find out what's next here's our interview with jeff metters jeff it is such a good great opportunity to visit with you thank you for your time and uh, welcome how you doing i'm good you and i have such a great history i mean you, we go back a long long ways i mean from the times where i'd be doing the tv you'd be doing the radio of the nfr um you and I have seen a lot of, of people come and go. Mm-hmm. I think we've seen a lot of changes uh, in the Western world. And uh, I don't know, if, if we ever decide to write a book, I think we could write a pretty good one. <laughs> yeah, we could. Uh, we could definitely write a pretty good book. Let me ask you about your uh, your plans going forward. Um, you made an announcement the last day of the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo on Luke Branquino's podcast that you had uh, submitted your resignation to the Cowboy Channel effective December 31st. Um, we're now into the month of January. Um Geronimo Productions has been your business for a long time. And my impression, Jeff, is that you're not sitting around waiting for things to happen. You're making some things happen. Yeah, absolutely. Can we go back to that day? That was round 10 of the NFR. Yeah. What do you remember about that day? Uh, I remember. <laughs> here's what I remember. I And I'm, I'm going to tell you the whole story. And I don't know that I've told very many people this story. Okay. But I did something at Cowboy Christmas on Anthony Lucia's show, which was upstairs. Um, from where um, you were doing Luke's podcast. And the escalator up and down came out right next to the booth that you guys were doing that show, uh, which was a Cowboy Channel's booth. And I come down after I get done with Anthony's show, and Luke is interviewing Butch Knowles to my left, and you're interviewing Trevor Brazil in another booth to my right. And I'm like, yep. Wow. Both of these guys' voices in my head at the same time, have I sinned, um, it was my first joking thought. <laughs> yes, you have. And and then some people came up and said, did you hear that Jeff made a big announcement? And I was 
a little surprised that the big announcement had come up. And then I have to admit, Jeff, your wife walked up shortly after that, and I brought up your big announcement to her, and she said, he did what? Um, so it was, uh, <laughs> you, you surprised a few people, I think on that day, if I remember right. I, I did, you know, and, and, you know, you were aware of it. It was one of those situations where, uh, nothing negative in any way or shape was going on, but, you know, you reach a state in your yeah. life where you realize it's time to make a change. Uh, you know, I mean, it was one of the things where uh, I told Patrick I'd be there three years. I was there four, um, I'd worked for Geronimo, my, my company, for myself for 20 years. Uh, you know, you, you know, I, I've been smart enough, and at this stage of my life, uh, I know when it's time to 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 move. Yeah. Um, you know, and I I had I had informed the powers that be, you know, before Thanksgiving, and um, you know, as, as you just kind of got closer, it was it was just I I just kind of threw that out there. I thought it would kind of would barely make a ripple. Uh, made a little bit more than a ripple, yeah. but uh, I love hearing stories like you're saying, where I, you go up and talk to to Diana, and she's like, "He did what?" But you know, that's been Diana's life now for 31 <laughs> years, actually 36 if you go with how long we've been dating. So yeah. uh, I have to keep her on her toes. You, it is it is a difficult transition to go from being a self employed person, I think, to working for somebody, and um. To be bluntly honest, one of the struggles I always faced was I've always worked for myself. Um, and But having the opportunity now to go back to being your own boss with Geronimo and the things that you're working on. Geronimo Productions, whether it was whether the NFR was on ESPN, CBS, um, wherever, you, you, you've been the person who's held those rights to produce the National Finals Rodeo for two or three decades now, right? Yeah, well, as a host for some, but for about when Carl Stressman was there, you know, we Geronimo was involved with them heavily the, the last decade that that Carl was the the commissioner of the PRCA, and you know, I, I you know, Carl and I had a great relationship. It was, it's kind of weird, you know, it, but it, to me, it's how it should be in the cowboy world. Carl and I, for the better part of a decade, did business with a handshake. Yeah. When I first took over the television, we signed a contract. We didn't sign another one until you know the last year or so when he was there. Uh, and that was more on a strategic reason, you know, uh, we'd sit down at the beginning of the year and I'd say, Hey, what do you want to do this year? And he'd say, Hey, this is what we're going to do. And we'd shake hands and we would just go do it. And I never really, I never really worried about that. And, right. and I miss, I like to do business like that. I, I, I hate when attorneys are involved and it's bogged down with legal agreements. And I'm going through some of that now or some other projects that I have. It, it takes a lot of the fun out of it. You would think when you have a cowboy hat and you say, Hey, this is what I'm going to do. Then, then you expect people uh, to do what they say they're going to do. They expect you to do what you're going to do. That's way more fun to me. Yeah. Uh, I think I would have been a better businessman in the 50s, 60s, and 70s than, than dealing with something in the, uh, in, in the, the 2020s or whatever. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Geronimo was involved for a long time. To get back to your question. I keep sidetracking you. Uh, but, yeah, it was, it was a fun part. It, it was great to be involved with. And I have so many people. It's not – it's not so much me, and I think I get way too much more credit. Uh, you know, it's the there's there's a great Ben Rector song, "The Men Who Drive Me Places." It reminds me so much of the guys that have worked with me for so long. Uh, they do all the heavy lifting, and for some reason, I'm the one that seems to get all the credit for it. Well, um, it, it a lot of that happens though, and and I mean, I watch you do a lot of the heavy lifting. Your guidance and your judgment, and this is a compliment, and it's friend to friend, but it's business business colleague to business colleague too. Um, your guidance and your judgment has, has helped to lead a lot of people in a lot of right directions. I hope Carl Stressman watches or listens to this because when I first took over the radio broadcast in the national finals way back in 2008, Carl had just come on as the commissioner and I did business with him the same way. Um, he would, he was yeah. great to me. I'm an awful lot of what I was able to do, 15, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, uh, was because Carl Stressman trusted me. And he and I become really good friends as a result of that. And I think the world of him, I'm, I share your opinion of that man completely. Yeah, he's at AQHA now. Yeah. And I'll tell you about Carl. He always leaves it better than, than, than how he found it. Yeah. You know, I mean, and I think that's what that's what I admire about Carl the most, you know. And, and he will leave AQHA better than how he found it. He left the PRCA 
better than, than how he found it. And it's just a, a gift that he has. Uh, I don't know. You know I'm not really in my, my father-in-law. I lost him in October. You know, he'd say, I'm not in the real estate business. I'm in the people business. And I really share that philosophy. I, I don't, Hey, we're doing Western television. You know, we're doing rodeo, we're doing right. running, we're doing cutting. But, but, but for me, it's the people, it's people like you, you know, it's people like Carly. Uh, it's, it's the team that you build, you know, and you try to make it like family, you know, and, and you, you, you treat everybody like family. And that's, that's what I'm after. And when I reach a situation where I can't keep that family atmosphere, then uh, that's when I start saying, you know what, it's, it's time for me to do something else. Yeah. Uh, speaking of family, I feel like this would be a good time to bring up the name Butch Knowles. Um, you guys Never heard are, of him. Yeah. <laughs> okay, fine. Well, we'll just move right on then. Yeah. Uh, you ever hang yeah. around Butch and Jeff when they're not on television? And even when they are on television, you feel like you're around an old married couple. You guys have been hooked at the hip for a long time. I, I would say that we are better off television than we are on television. I would it's agree a, with that completely, we, actually. We laugh that maybe if we – don't ever let us know it's our last broadcast together. Yeah. Because we will probably do one for the ages. I, I may have bourbon the whole time that we're on the air. <laughs> uh, yeah, but we, we have so much fun together. You know, I mean, he's the best guy in the world. Uh, you know, being put in the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame last summer meant the world to me. Probably more to me than it did him. Yeah. In all honesty, and we need to talk about the behind the scenes on that and the conversation. You know, uh, I save a, save two or three questions for that because I have a lot to say. Uh, but he's been so much. He's carried me a long time. Uh, great knowledge. You know, he's he's made me a bronc riding fan. Uh, he just there's not one end of the arena, in my opinion, that he's that he's stronger than than the other. He's one of those few broadcasters that he's as good on the time to end yeah. as he is on on the rough stock end, just because. He's a cowboy and he has done all that, but uh, what a great person. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I live for the moment when I can get the upper hand on him and pull something over on him because that is really, really hard to do. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And Butch and I have been friends for a long time. Again, he, you know, he's been involved in a bunch of things that I've done too. And um, just, he's a great talent. I don't, did, did he help to teach you rodeo, and did you help to teach him broadcasting? Am I am I being too cut and dried on that? If I ask that question, no, I think that's pretty much spot on. Um, you know, I think that what I brought to it was a the TV mentality. My goal for rodeo and for the NFR uh, has been to make it look like a mainstream television event, right? Like an NBA game, like a college football game, like like an NFL game. Uh, I. I I, I try not to interject too much, to be honest with you, on the rodeo side of things. Nobody cares about my opinion, and I'm not going to throw it out there. Now, I might push Joe Beaver or I might push Joe or, or Butch down a road where I'm going to force them to make an opinion, whether it's something that I think I saw or – but, I you know, I might I, – I do some things down that line. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I was more of the, the TV side of it, and, and I think I rubbed off on him – in that way, and then on the rodeo side of it, he rubs off on right. me. You know, I mean, I'll ask him a lot of things um, off the air or in commercial break or whatever. Um, you know, about was that did I see? Is that what I saw? You know, but uh, uh, yeah, it's been a, it's been great, Steve, because we've been able to do it so long. Right. You know, when you get sits up by somebody, you know, ten years. Uh, watch the NFL. I mean, they're shuffling. You know, I was listening to Dan Patrick. Uh, before I did this podcast, you know, and 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 they're talking about the shakeup at at the Fox the Fox side of of the broadcast with Tom Brady coming in, you know, with Greg Olson moving, uh, you know, those guys don't get to sit next to each other for very long, you know. Uh, right. Joe Buck and and Aikman have been able to stick that out, but but Butch and I've been able to do it now for for three decades, uh, and that makes it so easy, you know, from from my standpoint, um, you know, just to to know that he's there, he's a crutch. Uh, he knows we, we're not stepping all over each other. It's harmony, you know, and it takes a while to sit next to somebody. You and I, you and I've done rodeos together, right? you know, and it, like it, it's, it's tough because, uh, a, our, our roles are kind of similar, I think, in what we do. Uh, but it takes a while to find that symphony where it just becomes harmony 
and it flows the way that you hope it'll flow. I remember doing one together with you one time, and my whole thought in the back of my mind, and you would have lectured me to not do it this way, was, uh, okay, now what would Butch say right now? Uh, and I, I literally kind of went through that, and, and I, I have no idea yeah. how I would come up with what Butch would say. Why was it so important to you to get him in the Hall of Fame? I just think he's been the face of pro rodeo for a long time, for three decades. Right. He has been the best front man that you could ever ask for, you know, in, in pro rodeo, uh, his image, uh, what he stands for as a person, what he delivers on television, I think has gone a little bit unheralded. I think, you know, I, I think everybody takes it for granted almost, but I, I for sure in terms of people that made an impact on the PRCA and pro rodeo in the time that I had been there, he has made an impact uh, in a different way, on par with the Ty Murray, on par with the Trevor Brazil, on par with a Billy Epbauer, because he's been the voice of it. You know, as you think back on those guys, that's the voice that you hear. Uh, and he has done it in such an admirable cowboy way that uh, I felt it was really important for him to uh, get that recognition. I think of he him as like our it. John Mann. He didn't like it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. He didn't like it. I mean, you, you would have thought, I don't know. You would have thought you, you, you kicked his blue healer or whatever. When I think he got the news <laughs> that he was going to go in the pro rodeo hall of fame. He's fine. We're in Calgary last summer. We're doing Calgary. Right. And, and Mary's up there, his wife, and, and we're talking about it, you know, and, and he still is so reluctant. They have the big deal on Friday night. He didn't want to go. He told Ken Sturman, I'm not going to make it. I got to do Calgary, you know? And I think the only reason that he actually really went, was because he became concerned that if he had flight issues, because I'd had major flight issues getting to Calgary, that he would actually miss the induction. So, but, and, but after it was all said and done, he was like, I'm really glad that I went. And Mary talked about the evolution of getting the news. Uh, it was kind of like, it's kind of like, you know, what, you know, a death, you know, you go through all those stages of learning right. to deal with it, you know, and finally by the end, you know, he, he had realized that this is an honor. And I was telling him, because I'm a nice guy, I like to be an encourager, as you know. I said, you need to go down there, embrace it, enjoy it, because the next time this many people get together to honor you, you're going to be dead, and I'm going to be the guy behind the microphone. So you need to go, you need to go take it all in while you can. So, oh, yeah. that's funny. You actually had to get a little creative on the Calgary broadcast last year because you lost both Butch and Luke Branquino um, to the Hall of Fame yeah, elections that weekend. Yeah, and I had fun. I had Straws Milan, you know, who I wouldn't want to have to, to, to fight Straws over the last donut because I'm not, I'm not saying because of his weight. I'm just saying he's a big, stout guy. Yeah. You know, and I, I wouldn't stand a chance. And what a great character he is. Yeah. And did a super job in the steer wrestling. And then it was fun to sit with Roddy Hay. You know, Rod, Rod was the, uh, the, the saddle bronc riding analyst, you know, and, and Dawson, like, won, like, the last, what, four rounds? Uh to win kind of follow, following his dad's footsteps to, to win the Calgary stampede. So it was so much fun uh, to get a chance to sit next to Roddy and watch, you know, and watch Dawson, you know, do what he does. Cause I, I, I was there for most of Roddy's 20 NFRs. Right. Uh, and, and I've been there for a few uh, uh, Calgary stampedes for him too. But what are, he's a, he's such a character. Both those guys are. Uh, and that, that just makes it so much fun. Jeff, I have a question that you you probably can't answer, but people have asked me on multiple occasions at events that I've been to over the last month. Um, and the question is, will we see Jeff and Butch together again at the NFR someday? Man, I wish I knew the answer to that. Yeah. Um, you, you sound like you sound like Butch Knowles. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I don't know, Steve. I, I really don't know. Um, and you'll say, Hey, did you, did you take that into consideration? Um, you know, when, when you made the decisions that you made and the answer to that is absolutely, you know, I did, I, I'm optimistic that, you know, by come December, um, I'll be back there next to Butch. Um, but you know, I, there's some things I really need to do. Um, I shot a, a reality show uh, with Taylor Sheridan 10 nights in Las Vegas over what happens in Las Vegas. Uh, and we shot it this last December, and it's incredible. Um, from hanging out with Cody Johnson and his guys before they go on stage for a big concert to the highs and lows of what we saw in Thomas and Mac right. uh, to how Las Vegas goes from Sin City to Cowboy Town. Uh, and I think for me, you know, I, at this stage, Steve, for me, 
to take the sport where it needs to be, to take it to the next level, it has to be with something like that, which is like a, a drive to survive on Netflix or a hard knocks on HBO. Uh, those stories have to be told to take this outside of the choir, the church that we have here in the cowboy world. Um, you got it's that Yellowstone group, you know, the people that that you know probably would put their hat on backwards, but they watch Yellowstone. They went and bought a hat because they want to be like like yeah. John Dutton. Those are the people that need to hear the stories of these athletes. And you know as well as I do, uh, they're the toughest athletes in in the world. Uh, they're not getting paid millions of dollars. Right. They're gonna have they get their ass bucked off. They're beat up, and they have to go get in that truck, and they got to go drive however far to get to the next rodeo. If you read the if you read the job description for a timed event cowboy and pro rodeo, I can't believe there's more than five of them. Hey, you gotta you gotta buy a horse for a gazillion dollars. You need a, an amazing truck, an incredible trailer. You need to put diesel in it. You gotta haul it all over creation, and you might win something, and you might not. Yeah. You know, and I don't know. I don't know who goes. Yep, I'm signing up for that. It's kind of like those guys that that were invited to take a, you know, go on a trip to Antarctica, you know, back in the 1800s. You're probably going to die, but a gazillion of them signed up anyway. Yeah. But I think when you start telling the stories like that uh, to to America that doesn't really know, because you watch a rodeo, you know as well as I do, they're going to watch the NFR. 120 athletes come and go in about two hours. You don't see their faces. You don't hear their stories. It happens so fast. But back to your question, for me, that's more important now than to sit and, and do the National Finals Rodeo. I've done that for 30 years. Do I love it? It's my favorite thing in the world. But I feel like right now to take the sport to the next level, i got to create a series like 10 Nights and get it sold. And Taylor Sheridan's the guy that can get it out there uh, in a completely different venue on much different network. And I think that will change the game maybe more than anything I've done or had a chance to be a part of in my career. Um, you had, you had cameras all over the NFR, um, while it was we going did. on you and you and Taylor. Um, I think I've met Taylor Sheridan once and it was just a brief conversation, but his potential impact on, on all of this working with you could be very interesting. I think, couldn't it? I think so. I mean, I think he's created an amazing tidal wave, you know, with, with Yellowstone. And then he comes along with 1883 and 1923. Um, you know, and, and he's doing more about the four sixes ranch going to create a series around that. Um, you just want to tuck in there, you know, with that, you want to come up with, and he and I've been talking about this 10 nights project since 2018. Um, I thought it would probably happen in 2020, uh, you know, but it COVID hits. Right. Um, I came to, you know, the, the cowboy channel had acquired all the rights to pro rodeo. Uh, I figured 2019 was my last NFR to be honest with you, I uh, came down to, I came down to Fort Worth just to see if, see what it was going to be like to have some conversations. But in my mind in 2020, that was the year I would be all in on, on 10 nights in Vegas. And that was going to be my, my focus. Uh, COVID hit, things go the di a couple of different ways. And, and now we're sitting here in, in late January in, in 2024, the world's changed a lot, but finally I'm kind of getting back to that, that 10 nights project. Yeah. Are there some other big projects you're working on? I mean, how do I, I'm, I'm being nosy, Jeff, and there's some things that you, you might want to talk about. You might not want to talk about anything, but working on these things now, um, are there other things that you're working on that you're hoping to get out there? How do you find distribution? How do you find places to put all these things is, is being affiliated with Taylor Sheridan a big deal in all of that? That's a, I mean, I threw a lot it of stuff is, into one question there, but I think you know where I'm going. Yeah. Distribution is, is the thing. Um, that, that is the tricky part. And as I sat there in 2018, um, I had a concept that I thought was a winner, you know, a, a winner. And so you look at how am I going to be able to, to get this out there? And I've had connections. Uh, I, I've made different pitches to different networks on other projects on some things. Um, but I felt like Taylor was the easy road or, or the almost the sure bet. And he had a, he has a reality show called the last cowboy, which is around the reigning world right. that, um, you know, is, is, is about, about these rainers. And so there's so many of those rainers because of my years of doing AQHA stuff. I knew all of them, Craig and ginger Smurshall, you know, and, and things like that. So uh, I talked to ginger. I was like, Hey, what kind of a guy's Taylor? You know, she's a great guy, you know? And I, I said, I, I really feel like I need you to make an introduction 
uh, to me with him. And, and maybe that's the way that I go. So she set that up and in the fall of 18 and, and I went down and sat with him and he's a busy guy. Not he's even busier now. It'd be so much harder, I think, to 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 get in the door and create a relationship with him. And I'm really specific on 10 nights. This is what it is. Um, and I, I don't have a lot of variation in it. So, you know, Taylor Washington goes, we could do this and we could do that and we could do this. And I was like, no, mm -mm, no, no, this is what it is. And so he goes, you know, and we had a conversation, he goes, send me a copy. And, and then he's like, you know, I think you're right. I, I think you're right. And, and so for me, it, that's kind of how I got my foot in the door with him. Uh, we have some spinoff ideas, I think, as, as we get uh, 10 nights rolling. Uh, I have some other stuff that I've done, you know, that, that uh, now that I'm back working Geronimo full time, um, I've, I've dusted those off. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll, I'll probably throw them at Taylor and say, that, you know, you, you see a, a place for this. And if he says no, um, I have enough connections now that, you know, I will I will take those to the networks where I think they fit right. be a discovery, you know, or or, you know, or something like that. But. I would kind of like to leave it all umbrellaed under under Bosque Ranch and and Studio 101, um, you know. But you, you kind of, it's there's some give and take there. But um, I think it's worth my while. I don't care about, I don't care about having the credit for it. Um, all I care about is having the budget and the ability to go out there and create the series that I think are game changing for the industry. I'm kind of like an old actor. I mean, I, I'm just like, hey, you know, I did a couple of movies and now I'm just, I'm, I'm content moving behind the scenes if that's, if that's what I need to do. Professional rodeo and the Western way of life in general um, has experienced a significant amount of growth over the last four or five years for a lot of reasons. Um, Cowboy Channel being one of them, Taylor Sheridan, certainly the Yellowstone mm -hmm. effect being one of them. Um, I'm excited to hear you talking about, okay, what's next? What's the next step? How do we advance this beyond where we've already gotten? Um, you know, we've got a lot of events that are, that are being produced in front of sold out arenas year after year after year, uh, television ratings, I think were always pretty good on the NFR. Um, but I'm excited to hear you talking about what's next. Yeah. And I, I think hats off to Patrick Gotch. What, what an amazing vision in, in all the years. And I'm embarrassed to say that I never dreamed we'd have our own cowboy ESPN, right. you know? Uh, that was a bold vision. He put his money where his mouth is, um, and created something that, uh, I don't think anybody else had maybe the wherewithal to do absolutely unbelievable. But I also think that when you create something, a couple of these series that, that are like the full swing and drive to survive and hard knocks, I think that that will dramatically affect the bottom line of the Cowboy channel. Because now, I mean, if you look at what full swings done for the PGA tour and ratings at their events. Uh, you look at what Drive to Survive has done for uh, Formula One racing. Right. I mean, you have I, I have friends like Jay Winborn who runs the NCHA. His wife, if you ask her before Drive to Survive what F1 was, she wouldn't have a clue. Right. She got watching Drive to Survive. She doesn't miss an F1 race. You know, I think you create this amazing fan base, and it all comes back to the Cowboy Channel. You know, I think what it would do for the Cowboy Channel is almost immeasurable. Um, and what it'll do for the Western industry will will help us keep that wave going, you know, that, that we've got with Yellowstone and, and, and those kind of events. I think it's I think it's a really important piece of the puzzle. And I think that's definitely uh, the one that's missing. People are, are watching and listening to this, Jeff. And before we run out of time, um, they're they're thinking to themselves, OK, when do we get to see all this? How long does it take to produce? How long does it take to put it all together? Uh, we're, we're right in the middle of 10 nights right yeah. now. Um, and we'll probably have between now and the first part of March between three and five episodes, uh, done. Uh, and I think for Taylor, it's like, give me the teaser, give me that first episode and let's see if we can get this thing sold. Um, so it, it's a, a, it's a major importance to him, but it's, it's really important to me because I'm ready to get something out there, you know, and, and try and get the get it sold and get a network set and then find ways to promote it. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Metters has been the face and voice. I'm, I'm just going to say it. He's too humble to say it. I'm going to, he, he and Butch Knowles have been the face and voice for television fans of the national finals rodeo for three decades. Now um, Jeff has had a huge impact on professional rodeo. He's too humble to say it. I'm going to, 
Um, <laughs> and the next step is underway. And, uh, you know, it's funny. I, I read a, a bio, Jeff, of your induction in 2016, I think it was, into the Western Heritage Museum in Oklahoma City. And it starts this way. It says, you've heard it said that life is what happens to you while you're making other plans. And that's the way they headed off your bio for that induction into the um, Hall of Fame in Oklahoma City back in 2016. I think that still probably fits, doesn't it? It does, absolutely. Um, you know, I when I I decided what I was going to be in life when I was a junior in high school. Yeah. Um, a guy, a guy named Chris Lincoln came and spoke at my at my all sports banquet, um, and and I was like, he was the sports director at the ABC station in Tulsa. And I was like, I want Chris's job. I majored in it day one in college. Um, actually, at one time, I had a chance to get that job. And, uh, and contractually, I just couldn't move over there. But I thought I would be a sportscaster in, you know, Tulsa, and then move on to an Indianapolis Me or too. Chicago. Yeah. Yeah, and, and doing that kind of stuff. And a funny thing, you know, happened on the way to the, uh, to the theater, you know. Yeah. So um, it, was, it was a nice change. And for me, it was kind of... It started out subtle, Steve, you know, where I started doing stuff on ESPN in 1988. I did, did rodeo in 1991. I got away from it uh, in 2000, 2001 because I wasn't that I didn't want to do rodeo. Uh, it was I wanted to do more live television. So I, I, I kind of ventured over and did thoroughbred racing on ESPN, you know, for a couple of years. But it became really apparent to me um, probably by – the late nineties, I never wanted to go back to local television again. Uh, I, I wanted to, I wanted to settle in. I'm, you know how it is in, in the Western world and the rodeo world. People make you feel so at home. Yeah. They make you feel so at home. Uh, um, you know, I mean, you, you might have a few rodeo athletes that for some reason you don't, you know, you don't get along with, you know, but, uh, I can only think of one rodeo athlete that won't return my phone call, hmm. you know, and it's not anything that I did. I, and I, I have no idea why, but he might be the head of the of the the most successful family, and for some reason he's busy and has other things going. Uh, but you know they, they treat you like one of your own, right? Um, one of their own, and it's it's just so much fun. And you know as well as I do. I mean, it's once you kind of once you kind of settle in, why why would you want to go anywhere else? Yeah, I can't stand you know like LeBron James wouldn't text me during the game saying, "Hey, this is about what's going to happen." Cody Ole would text me all the time. Hmm. before the NFR started or after, you know, I mean, you know, they, they just, they reach out. You're one of them. Um, and they're, they're the kind of guys you want to hang out with. I've made the joke many times. Uh, I would never let my daughters date any rodeo cowboys, but they're the kind of guys you want to be in a foxhole with. Yeah. If you're going to war, that's for sure. The only one I would do that was Billy Epbauer, you know, and then, uh, but Billy's married. I don't think Holly would appreciate that. So. Yeah. Um, but it, it is a great group. It's, it's, there, there are things about this industry that are addictive. Um, and, you know, I, I, you and I talked a lot behind the scenes about my love for announcing. And um, it's, it's, it's a thing that I, I plan to continue to do for a very long time, hopefully, um, as rodeo committees continue to give me the opportunity. Uh, there, there are people and, and places and things in this industry that are just, you, once you get your foot in the door with them, you, it's hard to give them up. And, uh, and oh my gosh, so much fun! Yeah. Let me ask you a question. What? Because because you you and I have kind of we we're different in a lot of ways, but we're very similar, I think, in a lot of ways too. So one of the things that maybe I didn't really factor in as I as I made this latest decision in my career, um, I think it's something that maybe you've wrestled with too. Uh, you and I are, are used to having a, a national a national sounding board. Mm -hmm. We're used to being on national television, whether we're, whether we're talking about what's happened. Um, uh, it's been a sounding board for us, but we are, we, we spent years together. I, I think in, in the, the Western eye, the public eye right now, as you kind of step away from cowboy channel, you're not on there on a regular basis. You were on there more than me. Um, how do you stay relevant in the industry? You know, do people, do, do you worry about people kind of forgetting maybe who you are and what you're doing? Somebody told me the other day that they thought I needed to get back on television. And I think I think you need to be on back on TV, but keep going. Well, here's my thought, Jeff, and and 
remember that that I come at this with a with a love and a background. I got my first radio job when I was 17 years old, which was I hate to admit my age 46 years ago. Um, I come at this with a real love for radio. Um, and that's what I did for you. The, the first few times that I remember you and I were in Rapid City, South Dakota one time. It was the first year of the Champions Challenge events. You were actually running a camera and it was 10 degrees below zero outside. Um, and I grabbed you and you came over and did a little bit on my on my radio broadcast that night from that Champions Challenge event. I think it was the first time I ever saw Sage Kimsey. If I remember right, Sage and J.W. Harris split it and they had a coin flip or something to see who got the buckle in the arena. But shame that we've never heard anything else from either one of those guys. Yeah, I mean, just you know, they both just disappeared and <laughs> rode off into they the did. sunset. It could have been. It could have been something. Yeah, they could have been. <laughs> but to answer your question, um, I am I am thrilled to have the opportunity to try to build a podcast, to try to build um, radio stuff. Um, Next Gen Rodeo reached out to me. We're creating Next Gen Rodeo Media. Uh, we did. You, you gave me a hard time at, on de, December the 10th at the NFR because I went on our show on Next Gen and announced your announcement of resignation. And I think I kind of maybe I didn't I wasn't trying to stir the pot, but um, it got a little bit of attention. Um, in addition, Gosh, to so many people saw said. that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, yeah. So I the answer to your question is, yeah, I would I would take advantage of the opportunity if it ever came up again. But I'm not going to sit around and wait for it. Um, I, I can talk to, I was in Red Bluff, California on Saturday night in an arena that seats about 3,000 people with standing room for, I think they had 5,000 people in a 3,000 seat arena. And I had a chance for two and a half hours to tell them the story of the bull riding industry and the Western way of life and the, and the sport that I love. And to me, that is, um, to answer your question, that opportunity, as long as I can continue to do a good job and people continue to hire me, it's going to mean a lot to me. Um, doing things like this, doing things like this show, I'm happy with that. I can do that all day. Um, I love interviewing people. I think it's the thing that I'm the best at, that and announcing rodeos. Um, and so, does that answer your question? I, I, yeah, you, cause you... I would take the opportunity if it ever came up again. But I'm also intent on building something that I can put my stamp on in the podcasting world, in the radio show world, in the announcing world, and maybe some other things as, as I continue to learn social media, which I still am really bad at um, as time goes by. And so we'll see where this all goes. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. There, there are so many opportunities out there yeah. now. I, mean, I, have a, I have a studio right back here. That I, I just need to I need to set up, start creating different social media content, doing some different things, right. um, I, and I I'm excited to do that. I'm just up to here with ten nights, trying to get that trying to get that ready to go. I mean, I can do western a western roundup, uh, western sports roundup show. Yeah, you know, just right here. You know, I mean, I there 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 are a couple of shows that I I would love to have done on Cowboy Channel, uh, didn't really have the time or whatever to deal with, but. More of a and and I think, you know what? Like your podcast, I, I I watch Dan Patrick just about every day. Yeah, we should have created a podcast for you like that where it aired live on rural radio uh, on the Cowboy Channel, and we did it in the studio right there. I'd like to do a complete opinion show. I'd yeah. love to do an opinion show uh, on everything that's going on in the Western world. Now Byron Walker, I mean he's he's always oh Byron's you know, he got loves opinions. to stir the pot yeah. there. There's so there's so many there's so many things that you could do down that line. I think it'd be fun. So that, I got that out of your your answer. That's yeah. what I got. That yeah. That there's a lot of there's a lot of ways in social media. There's a lot of a lot of outlets now to g generate content and stay relevant. I and had, then you reminded me that I could go ahead. Go. Well, I was going to say during the I mean during the national finals rodeo, four words from Kai Hamilton created the single most viral video interview I've ever had in my life. Um, we had, I mean, my, my Facebook pages all by themselves had over 3 million interactions during the national finals rodeo. Um, that yeah. one interview I did with Kai and his expression of don't be a pansy, which isn't exactly what he said, but it was close. Um, yep. I mean, we reached a ton of people with that. Um, yeah. People want to, I think people are hungry 
for all of the stories that we have an opportunity to to tell, you and I have have both have opportunities now to reach out on our own and to try to tell those stories in the way that we see fit. Yeah, and a little more raw. Yeah, uh, you know, not so. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be family friendly television or family friendly media, like you know, like you were just touching on with. with with Kai and, and so much stuff that we shot in Vegas, uh, you know, on 10 nights is, is, is way more raw, you know, then it gets, it gets, pa- it gets past the, we're all friends persona, you right. know, a little bit. Uh, and I think that's, and, and that's, what's missing. I think too, Steve, in, in some aspect is we got to be real yeah, because these, these guys, who they are, sell themselves. Right. Uh, but the other thing I got out of it is you and I are so different in one area. If you ask me if I wanted to come announce a rodeo, I would be like, hmm, let me think about it for a second. Hell no. There's <laughs> no way. I'm used to talking I'm used to talking from when it fades up from black and it fades yeah. to black. I'm not used to talking from before the grand entry starts until well after the last bull rider bull rider leaves the I was like, not a chance. Yeah. And, and radio, you have that gift of gab. You're so comfortable sitting down and you know, and, and hey, I'm gonna do an hour, you know on radio. And even if you might have one guest or whatever, you'd be, you'd be totally fine with it. But I marvel at you guys that, that, that announce rodeos and do it as amazingly as you guys do it. And I'm really grateful that it's not me. I don't have that gift of gab. I'm not that chatty, you know, for the most part. The the fun thing about it is the interaction with the audience and the interaction with contestants live right there in the moment. Um, and that, that to me is, I, I talked to one of my, my favorite rodeos to announce, the rodeo committee from uh, the gentleman, Don Gill, who puts on the rodeo in Gooding, Idaho, this morning. Um, come out there sometime, Jeff, if you get a chance to. Sit in the beer-worthy section. Um, it's it's the week after the Farm City Pro Rodeo in Hermiston, Oregon, that I had a chance to do for the first time last year. When, when you get a chance to interact with audiences and and – see them i i understand why musicians fall in love with standing on a stage um or comedians because when you can when you can feel like something you have done said a point that you've tried to make a joke you've tried to tell has an impact on people at that moment it's a it's a rush it's a real rush for me anyway i don't know if the rest of my colleagues in the announcing world say the same thing but for me that's a rush yeah it's it's I am, I, you know, I've emceed, emceed banquets. I've done different things where you literally have that that live audience. Yeah. And you know, when you're when we're doing stuff at the Cowboy Channel, it's just the eye that never blinks. Right. You know, there's there there is no whether you're whether you said something that you think is funny, whether it's funny or not, you really don't know. Yeah. <laughs> that that opportunity, the Cowboy Channel opportunity. You asked me if I'd go back on TV again someday. Yeah, I would. Um, Cowboy Channel opportunity gave me a platform and. To this day, I'm I'm flattered that people come up and say, you know, we want every once in a while I get people come up and say I watch you every day. Well, no, not since July, uh, but um, um, <laughs> I'm flattered at the at the people who who are and were fans, and uh, that means a lot to me. Um, no, who knows what the future holds? We'll see. No, don't know. I have no idea. Yeah, um, I I, st- I I am a firm believer in. I'm trying to think the word that my wife has for me, uh, Pollyanna, you're a Pollyanna and I call her doom. You know, I mean, I, it, you can give, I don't care what the situation is that you can throw out there. She sees what can possibly go wrong. Yeah. I only see what can possibly go right. Uh, and, and I think the best is, is still yet to come. Yeah. And I'm sitting here. I'm not the youngest chicken in the, in the barnyard anymore, you know, but I, I still think, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, for the next 10, 12 years, uh, I, I'm going to strive to make as big an impact as I, I ever have in the Western world. I think that's a good place to wrap this up. Jeff, I appreciate your time so much. Um, please do me a favor and please keep me in the loop on your projects as they come together. And when you get closer to releasing, you know, the 10 nights and, and any of the other things that you're up to. And, and, you know, we need to just stay in touch. But please make sure you keep me in that loop so I can help to tell the world about it when it gets to that point. I will. I would like to do another podcast with you again soon. Okay. But here's the deal. I want to interview you. Okay. So I want to flip flop it. So we'll do a podcast, but, but I get to ask the questions and I get to run the, you know me, I, I, I don't, I, I just want to, I got to put all the 
the places in the sand, the, the toys in the sandbox where they need to go. Okay. I think it'd be better that the next one, um, it'll be a podcast with me, but I get to do all the, inter- I get to ask all the questions. The Steve Canyon podcast hosted by Jeff Metters. Is that what you're telling me? Yes, that's okay. exactly what it all is. Right. Yeah, that's you're it. not going to bring Butch in, 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 in as a guest host or anything, are you? Mm-hmm. You never can tell. Okay, you never um, can tell. Makes me a little nervous, <laughs> but we'll we will he, at your he, at your uh, at, at a time and place of your convenience. We will make that happen, Jeff. How's that? And, and if Butch is a part of it, it just depends on the technology that's invaded yep. Hefner, Oregon. So good point. Um, I had to send him a tell. Last time I talked to him, I sent him a telegram. I think so. We'll, we'll go from there. <laughs> good point, Jeff Metters. It's such a pleasure. Uh, Geronimo Productions. Is there? Should should folks be keeping an eye on anything on social media or anything like that, or are you to that point yet with some of these things? I'm the worst. I, I just okay. gotta I gotta rally my daughter and get her to Got get her to to take over. When she she usually does a hostile takeover of my social media. Uh, I I tend to post like next to nothing. So, and I you know what you're probably like me. Like my friends stay maxed on Facebook, and I might know ten percent of them. Right. You know. Um, and, and my wife was like, why, why do you, I said, you know what? I get an inside glimpse to, to so many people who are so nice in the Western world. I get a glimpse into their life. Right. Hey, I lost my dad. Hey, look at my kid just did this. I, it's, 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 to me, it's like, I'm a voyeur almost where I'm just peeking in to the lives of people that I really don't even know, but I get to experience the highs and lows that they have every day. And, and that's, that's the attraction to social media for me. Not putting something out boring about me, but I'll I'll try to do better. You got it. Uh, Jeff Matters with us. I might post something on my corgi. Okay, that that I might well, post something on my corgi. It's not like I've it. never posted a picture of a dachshund, so I understand. It. <laughs> Jeff, it's such a All pleasure. Right. Stay in touch, my friend. Steve, you know I love you. Talk to you soon. Jeff Matters joining us on the Steve Canyon podcast. So apparently what we just learned is that sometime I either need to be really scared or really excited because there's going to be a Steve Kenyon podcast where Jeff Metters interviews me. That should be fun. Uh, we'll uh, we'll let you know when it happens. Uh, thanks to our sponsors, Wrangler, Long Live Cowboys, to the Justin Boot Company, to Resist All. We wear it every day. To Prefert, number one in ranch and rodeo. M2 Ranch Jerky, it's coming soon. True traditional cowboy jerky to Unbeatable Feeds, online at unbeatablefeeds.com, and to the Grandview at Las Vegas. We'll keep it up and we'll do it again please check out all of our videos all of the interviews that we have check out the next gen rodeo website and facebook page next gen rodeo media has got some great new original content and we'd love it if you'd take a look at all of that god bless everybody i'm steve Kenyon.